This man cannot remain power. <laughs> Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my new video. I got a nice little treat for you guys today. So I was down in Manchester to visit one of my friends and um, I was in the town centre and then I heard a lot of noise behind me. I looked around and basically I just saw a load of uh, Hong Kong protesters. So I followed them and they gathered in, gathered in this area and they were protesting and I decided to be a bit of a nuisance as I am and started interviewing a few of them and one guy I interviewed, um, he was a young guy, he was, he was quite polite and friendly um, so I didn't want to you know, give him a hard time too much so he, was, he looked like a young kid anyway so I didn't want to give him a hard time so I kind of let him go then I found this older guy who I was um, I thought I'd start you know, giving him a lot more tougher questions and um, so I decided to give him some tough questions and one particular question I asked him and uh, he couldn't really answer and he got quite aggressive he was, he was uh, basically coming near my face and uh, he was like shouting and screaming something in uh, Cantonese I couldn't understand what he was saying and at this point some of his friends started coming and surrounding me and start pushing me around and um, I'm not a small guy by the way I can kind of handle myself and so uh, obviously uh, I managed to calm the situation down and uh, the police actually turned up as well and uh, they nearly arrested me apparently these um, Hong Kongers basically started saying I was causing trouble and causing um, mischief so um, I, w I wasn't arrested or anything P police just said you know just uh, stay out the protest so I had to kind of move away so um, I'd love to show you these clips I managed to get most of the stuff um, properly on camera so I'll show you I'll show you the stuff I've got um, obviously I'm here to entertain you guys so I'm sure you'll find it a bit of um, entertainment here um, the questions I asked that guy before he got really annoyed um, you'll have to watch the video uh, I'll type in the question and I can't show any of the sound when it comes to that point as well but mainly because um, I'm gonna get in trouble um, obviously the police turned up and um, they told me certain things I can do and cannot do so um, so I have to kind of stick by the rules unfortunately if you want to see the uncut version you're gonna have to join my patreon and I'm happy to kind of send you a link with an uncut version but you'll have to be on my patreon unfortunately I'm not doing it for free guys you know this stuff can make get me into trouble secondly as this video has got a very much a Hong Kong theme uh, the second part of the video is about um, a homeless guy in uh, in London he apparently came from Hong Kong sold all his belongings in Hong Kong came to UK and he's ended up being homeless so I'm sure a few of you have seen that video I posted it about six months ago um, and I'm sort of sure some of you have seen it but some of you haven't if you haven't then you're welcome to watch it again um, apologies if you have already seen it but you know it's probably worth watching again anyway anyway that's all I wanted to say for now uh, without wasting any more time if I can quickly ask you guys to do me a favor um, you can join my patreon or you can um, buy me a coffee if you want if you like the video if you like what I do um, any support for the channel is appreciated or you can just simply like share subscribe if you know equally I'm happy with that as well anyway um, so let's carry on with the video uh, in the streets of Manchester yeah, all these Hong Kongers demonstrating seem to be demonstrating um, for some sort of Hong Kong independence but Hong Kong is independent it's independent from the British you know Hong Kong never had any democracy um, never had any elections when the British took it over so um, I'm going to try and see if I can grab a few and maybe talk to some of these brainwashed goons. Let's see what if there's any 
idiots here. Thank you. Do you want to do an interview? Interview. Yeah. Um, why do you, Why do you want Hong Kong independence? Um, why? Hong Kong is so much different with China. Uh, uh, the law is different, the culture is different. Even the language is different. Um, these two pages is not. Oh, I can't hear you. Should we go over there? Really loud here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fine here. Yeah. So you you were saying? This is Oh, just saying. Oh, I'm not. I'm not pressed. I'm just interested. I'm curious. I'm curious. Okay. Yeah. yeah, go on, sorry. Yeah, so, what's the question, sorry? Yeah, so why do you want uh, independence from, from China? Is it, wasn't Hong Kong part of China and what the British took over Hong Kong by force? Um, I don't think Hong Kong should be part of China. Many years ago, yes, but uh, nowadays the, the culture is different. Uh, under the rule, uh, under, under the UK, uh, Hong Kong, the culture, the language, uh, the law, everything is different with China. So mm -hmm. there's no point to uh, go back, kind of go back to China. Yeah. Yeah, but is it, is, you're all one Chinese people, right? You're all Chinese. Uh, I don't claim myself as Chinese. Hong Kong is, Hong Kong is not Chinese. Yeah, Hong Kong is, is for Hong Kong people and Chinese only for that China, China people. Yeah. yeah, but what about the history when the British took Hong Kong by force? I mean, wasn't um, that wrong? I mean, what if the British took if you talk about Hong the Kong history, now? Yeah. Uh, it, uh, 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 in Hong Kong, there's three parts. We, we, we have three parts. Uh, Hong Kong Island, uh, Kowloon, and New Territories. And uh, for uh, New Territories and Kowloon, uh, there's um, 99 years of... Um, uh, there's an expiry day, 99 years. But for Hong Kong Island, there's no expiry date, so that should be um, for forever, forever. So sure, there's no point to, uh, for China to have the whole Hong Kong back to, back to now. Sure. Yeah. So can I ask about you? Did you come here with the passport, BNO passport? Or? Yeah, I have. Yeah. So, so what did you do with Hong Kong? Did you sell your sell your property and come here? Or? Yeah. Uh, actually, I, I came here in 2014. Yeah. I studied here. Uh, later on, after 2019, uh, the protest, mm. I decided to uh, stay here, not going back. Yeah, because a lot of people here, I'm seeing a lot of different ages, young and old. Yeah. So, uh, have all of them sold their properties in Hong Kong to live here? and what's, Or do they go back afterwards? What's the Many of them, I think 70%. 70% of them are not going back anymore. Okay. Uh, maybe for visit, maybe some of them will go back to uh, see their, their family. But uh, for long term, to see people here, over, I think 90% are going to stay here forever. Really? Wow. Yeah. Because I see a lot of young kids there as well, so they have completely moved to start a new life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what about jobs? Are they finding jobs? Or yeah, so? they, do, they do find jobs, they do work here. What about, yeah. the, is it the same jobs as Hong Kong or is it lower, lower paid? Some people have the same job, but some people may have to work as um, a restaurant, what is it, a restaurant or maybe some... Um, 
Uh, working class and the working class. Yeah. Okay, okay. But they're happy with that, is it? They're happy. Uh, much happier than Hong Kong. Nowadays, Hong Kong, you, you can't. You know what's happy there. <laughs> no one's happy there. But they must be happy people there because there's still a lot of people living in Hong Kong. Yeah, but uh, they, they got many concerns. Like, um, maybe they, they have a mother or maybe grandmother, 80 years ago, 80 years old. So, how, how can they move? Or maybe uh, they just buy property a few years ago. They can't, they can't sell it. There are many reasons. But uh, I don't think people in Hong Kong are happy if they, if they uh, believe in democracy. Yeah, if they hate China. Sure. So you said democracy, but Hong Kong never had a democracy, right? You never had any elections. Uh, not a true, not a true democracy. It's fake. It's fake. Yeah, exactly. So, so why, why are people saying they want democracy when there, there was never any democracy in Hong Kong when you British ruled? Yeah. Uh, when when British ruled Hong Kong, people people happy. People. Um, People are happy. And after Hong Kong went to China, many problems come from China. And uh, we have we want the changes. If we want the changes, uh, we need the government to, to change. So that's why we, we need democracy. If the government, uh, the chief executive is uh, assigned by the CCP, how can we change? We, we change nothing. Yeah, yeah. And also, what do you think of Jackie Chan? Because uh, a lot Jackie of people Chan, say, he, yeah, yeah, a lot of people. Are, he, isn't he like a hero of Hong Kong? No, no? never, no? never. Uh, he's a Hong Kong native, yeah, but um, he he loves China. Um, he say Hong Kong, he, he pull China. So, so everything about Hong Kong, he, if you think uh, should be should be should be part of China, should be uh, uh, we are family, that that sort of stuff. Right, right. Nah, nah, nah. And what what are your thoughts on uh, Asian violence in UK? Do, do you know anyone that's been had any Asian violence here? You mean uh, kind of, like uh, racist violence or Asian? Uh, uh, you mean um, Chinese people, racist Hong Kongers or? Bridges or maybe oh, uh, no, like white people, white people, white people. Yeah. Um, not too much. I think. Not too much in the UK. In the US, maybe. In Australia, maybe. But in the UK, I I don't yeah. feel a lot. I don't see yeah. a lot. Because yeah, I've got a friend as well. He got beaten up and he got put into coma. Um, but this was in London. But uh, uh, there's always some cases, but yeah. not a really big problem. Not always happens. Where is everybody from? Is it all part of UK? Or mainly Manchester, they live uh, in Manchester, in and uh, at the same day today uh, in London, at least in London, I know there's uh, another protest in London. Yeah, um, probably uh, in Sheffield or in in Birmingham. I'm not sure. There's another one. Yeah, right, Midland, right, yeah. right. Okay, okay. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks yeah. for that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, uh, thanks for your help. What's your name? Oh, uh, Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Cheers. So at this point, I decided to speak to somebody a bit older. So this is the guy um, I was speaking to and um, it started off quite well then um, my questions started getting a bit more tougher um, the, the first young guy I kind of let him off a bit uh, I wasn't I didn't really give him a, too much of a hard time so I obviously have a lot of knowledge about China so I really really pushed um, this guy to his limits I wanted to see how brainwashed this guy is and unfortunately he is very brainwashed and my final question which actually took him over the edge um, he was talking about you know democracy and things like that he was saying how bad um, the CCP is and stuff then I started saying if you know the CCP is so bad why did they bring out 800 million people out of poverty and and these are Chinese people who are coming out of poverty and and you just have to look at China what China has done over the past 20 years the great advances it's made and gave him quite a lot of examples and stuff and he didn't like it he just didn't like the truth he didn't you know he did not like the truth and then I was talking about Hong Kong and all the problems Hong Kong has basically Hong Kong is basically 
uh, a vest, you know, basically a port that the British used for opium trade back in the day. And so many issues with Hong Kong, like house prices, property prices are gone through the roof. Uh, there's a huge imbalance of rich versus poor. Uh, the poor people live in basically really small cramped spaces where the rich live like kings. So I asked him whether that's a system that he likes, that's what what he wants from Hong Kong. And you know, then I was talking about the West and it's ca the problems with capitalism, problem with homelessness and poverty in America and the same in UK and comparing the two systems. And uh, and he couldn't really answer it and he got really, uh, started getting really aggressive and his mates came round and you know, and one thing led to another. So I'm not allowed to put the sound, um, unfortunately. So like I said, if you guys like what I do and you want me to kind of carry on going to these protests and giving these guys hard hitting questions then please show your support um, so I can go ahead and do uh, stuff like this um, the other thing is um, you might have noticed a couple of Ukrainian people with flags as well even Hong Kong people carrying uh, Ukrainian flags with them um, so they seem to be going hand in hand at the moment so why am I interested in Hong Kong as a Westerner, you might say? Well, let me say that I've always been interested in Hong Kong. You know, I grew up watching martial art films ever since I was a kid. I grew up watching Bruce Lee. I grew up watching Jackie Chan, Jet Li, Donnie Yen, Yeon Byu, Samo Hong. You know, I've watched every single film there is, martial art film there is coming out of Hong Kong. I was completely obsessed with them at one point. I went and visited Hong Kong twice and, you know, I loved Hong Kong, you know, I love the people, I love the food, I love the culture, uh, I, I even met Jackie Chan there, believe it or not. I am one of his biggest fans, um, he's not going to get a bigger fan than me, uh, basically I've watched all of his films, uh, my favourite films of his was Police Story, then he got Police Story 2. Um, I, I just love Police Story, it's just the whole film, it's amazing. When I saw that as a kid, the last scene, the fighting scene in the shopping center and all of the stunts that he was doing, I was in awe, I was thinking, whoa. And then he released Police Story 2 and I, I was even in more of an awe because there's amazing stunts in that film as well. I also love his other films like Project A, um, Dragons Forever. I love those Mules and Wheels as well. Um, I, I used to love all of his films back in the day. Lately, his films are not not that good. I don't I don't know what's happening. I think he's lost his touch. Um, he hasn't made a good film since um, uh, Rumble in the Bronx, I think, or Rush Hour. Yeah, Rush Hour is probably his last greatest film. So yeah, so it's not just Jackie Chan, I, you know, I used to love Chow Yun Fat as well. Everything that came out of Hong Kong I used to love. I used to love all of the martial art movies that Raymond Chow used to make, Golden Harvest, you know, I used to love them all. Even martial artists like Yun Biu, um, Sama Hung, I, used to, I loved all of their films. You know, and also Cynthia Rothrock, um, watched Cynthia Rothrock, um, Kick-Ass in um, some martial art films. You know, I'm a real, real geek of martial art films. I know so much about these films. I've probably watched them hundreds and hundreds of times. If somebody gives me, um, if someone gives me a, a quiz on some of these martial art films coming out of Hong Kong, I will get every single question right, I guarantee you. If you guys wanna talk to me about martial art films, you'll be my best friend for life because I got million one things to say to you. So any, anyway, enough about that. Hong Kong, basically. That this is, you know, this is why I've always been interested in Hong Kong, uh, the culture, the history, mainly because of the martial art films. I didn't really know much about the Opium Wars when I was young, but when I was older, I started reading up about it, and I was quite shocked, um, shocked at what the British did um, when it come to, when it came to Hong Kong, and you know, I'm pretty much shocked by how they kind of seized Hong Kong from the Chinese and doing all of these opium trades with it and you know getting most of China hooked 
And at the time, you know, Hong Kong was a rich part of China. Um, well, when I say part of China, back then it wasn't part of China. It basically, British had taken taken it away. And it's very similar to a thief coming into your house, like a robber coming into your house and basically taking your living room and say, all right, this living room from now on, it's mine. I'm going to take it for a 99 year lease and you can't do anything about it. The whole point is all of this culture that I've grown up with, all of these martial art films and everything I knew about Hong Kong, it's all Chinese. You know, it's all Chinese. Bruce Lee learnt from Master Yip, who was raised in Foshan. And you got Jackie Chan, Sammo Hong, Yun Biu, they were raised in the Peking Opera. And as you know, Peking Opera, you know, Peking is the Western name for Beijing. When the Japanese invaded, uh, colonised China at the time, they called Beijing P Peking and the Westerners have been calling Peking as well. So ever since the um, Chinese Communist Party took uh, control of China, they've renamed Peking back to Beijing. Um, the whole point is, all of this culture, all this martial arts, it's all originated from China. It's all one China. And Jackie Chan, you know, he's hated in Hong Kong at the moment, absolutely hated. And I just don't know why. I think that guy is a hero. I mean, he's he's one of the greatest movie stars ever lived. And he has changed the world. He's changed my life, definitely. And, you know, Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan, these guys are heroes. And just because Jackie Chan has said, you know, he's very fa said very favorable things to about China, you know, he's absolutely hated in Hong Kong. These youngsters, seriously, just don't have a clue. They just don't understand that when Jackie Chan was growing up, things were different then and things are different now. A lot of Chinese actually moved to Hong Kong, uh, basically, because they thought all the Westerners are in Hong Kong, all the money is in Hong Kong. So over the years, a lot of Chinese moved to Hong Kong to make money and stuff. Uh, some ended up staying in Hong Kong, some ended up stay, you know, raising their families and stuff. But Hong Kong has got many, many issues. It's basically, you know, the British have gone in. They don't really care about the Hong Kong people or the Chinese people. They just went in to make money. And people that have money in Hong Kong, people that make money in Hong Kong, they live like kings. But while well, the rest of the population basically, you know, lives like pov poverty. Hong Kong is one of those few places that in the world it's got best of both worlds it's got the best of east and it's got the best of west and not many people realize this but hong kong you know people in hong kong they can access social media from the west like they can access facebook they can access you know uh, um you know instagram and all of that stuff and they can also access chinese social media as well so you see they've got the best of both worlds and i think if you have a place where you have the best of both worlds you know you're just you're just winning anyway let's move on to the second part of the video today's video i'm going to be talking about hong kongers living in uk how some are living in the streets how some are homeless how some are being forced to work in low-paid jobs they don't want to work in and a lot of them are really unhappy and, and why I think they made the wrong decision leaving Hong Kong and coming to UK. So before I start guys don't forget to like share support this channel if you can support this channel in our Patreon I'd really appreciate it um, if you can't support us on Patreon make sure you buy us a coffee on the links I've sent you it's important you support these channels guys because you know, channels like myself, we need the support to continue. Otherwise, we just go out of business. As I said in my previous channels, you try and do good in the world. You try and to you try and speak the truth. Um, you try and spread good good things. Um, you just get um, shut out. You get no support. But if you spread hate, you say anti-Chinese slogans. You jump on the bandwagon and yeah you get a lot of support you get a lot of money that's why it's very very important to support channels like myself who spread the truth and give you a completely different outlook from what normal mainstream media tells you what the politicians tell you 
I give a completely different outlook and a very positive outlook I debunk a lot of lies that's out there so it's very important you support channels like myself uh, for us to continue uh, otherwise we all got our business and I'm, I'm sure none of us want that so continue supporting this channel guys I really really appreciate it thanks a lot and let's get on with the channel so this guy um, came on um, last year saying he was homeless living in UK so let's see what he has to say shall we I don't need to worry about whether he'll be brainwashed the tension is higher and the price is rising I know that Hong Kongers are Britain's fastest growing community. On average, since January, around two and a half thousand Hong Kongers a week are arriving or applying to come to the UK. Enoch is now homeless and relying on food banks in London. He says he used his savings to survive during lockdown and now can't afford the visa application process. To be frank, I got a jolly good life back in Hong Kong before the movement, every single day I'm struggling to about where I'm going to sleep. In 2019, Enoch and others rallied outside the British consulate in Hong Kong, waving Union Jack flags and singing God Save the Queen. Let's all pray together for Majesty the Queen and United Kingdom. This is Enoch on the megaphone. He's condemned the visa application process as a scheme for the well-off. What do you feel towards the British government? It's like a betrayal. Anthea, not her real name, doesn't want to be identified. She came to the UK with her son under the visa scheme. The local people I met here is all are very friendly. They just offer help and always ask, what can I help you? Uh, how do you find here? Um, if you need any help, just just to us then we, we but she has some concerns do, do you think it can cause tension if you get a lot of arrivals from Hong Kong in a short space of time yes yes sure uh, just like uh, finding a place to live is already uh, the tension is higher and the price is rising I know that Anthea was able to find accommodation with the help of the church, but she told us why some Hong Kongers may struggle. When Hong Kong people come, because we do not have any credit score here, we do not have any working history or any income in Hong Kong. So normally, um, the landlord will not rent a place to uh, people like that. But um, because the English landlord know the Hong Kong story, they are willing to help. Many of those we spoke to didn't want to be identified because of security concerns for relatives still in Hong Kong. The day I arrive, I feel relieved. Yeah, I think finally we can, finally we can plan our future in the longer terms. Um, finally, I don't have to worry about my kids' educations. I, I means I don't need to worry about whether he'll be brainwashed. So what I'm seeing is um, about 2,500 per week apparently were coming from Hong Kong living in UK. And what a lot of these Hong Kongers don't realise is UK is actually on its way down while Hong Kong is on its way up. So people that are leaving Hong Kong, their places or their apartments are going to be replaced by a mainlander because there's not much space in Hong Kong. I mean, you know, it's absolutely crammed. So everyone that leaves Hong Kong, you know, their, their places are gonna be replaced by somebody from mainland wants to live in Hong Kong. And so Hong Kong will thrive. UK, on the other hand, you know, there's interest rates rises, um, there's cost of inflation rising, there's gas prices rising, there's house prices rising, there's, taxes rising you know everything is rising in uk the cost of living is terrible so all of these hong kongers coming to uk thinking they're going to have a good life they're not absolutely stupid absolutely stupid decision i mean a lot of hong kongers are actually being forced to work in jobs that they don't want to work in like for example you can see this one UK turns to Hong Kong job seekers to solve lorry driver shortage and petrol crisis. So there was a time in UK where there was a lorry driver shortage. 100,000 lorry drivers were shortage in UK. And so 
a lot of the Hong Kongers were being forced to uh, basically become lorry drivers. And there's another article here where, you know, somebody from Hong Kong came, came in and even he's saying that he's happy to work in low paid jobs. And you can see this guy here from Hong Kong. He says, a former trader in Hong Kong's lucrative financial sector, Mock knows that he has little chance of matching his old salary. I'm prepared to do any kind of low paid blue collar work like food and parcel deliveries, he says. I don't miss Hong Kong because I gave up Hong Kong as a place to live long time ago. There's nothing left for me there. So I just think that's really stupid. Leaving a well-paid job in Hong Kong, coming to UK and working in a low-paid job, working in you know supermarkets or emptying bins or things like that that Britain, British people don't want to do, isn't that kind of embarrassing? That the jobs that British people don't want to do, basically all of these Hong Kongers are doing it. In the past, um, Eastern Europeans used to do these jobs, but since Brexit, all of these Eastern Europeans have left. So there's a lot of low-paid jobs like street cleaning, um, things that British people just don't want to do. And they're now forcing a lot of these Hong Kongers to do it. Not only that, there is a lot of violence happening against Asians. And especially if you're Chinese, so even if you're Hong Kongers, you're still classed as Chinese. It doesn't matter whether you come from Hong Kong or any other country, but if you're coming from Hong Kong, people will identify you as Chinese. So chances are you will get a lot more violence or you'll get racist attacks. The thing is, they don't seem to think things through. You know, at Hong Kong, you know, basically they have their family, they have their friends, they have their life, you know, Basically, they have everything. They've studied in Hong Kong. They've got jobs in Hong Kong. You cannot be a banker in Hong Kong and come to UK and expect to work in a bank because everything is different here. You've got your rules, regulations. Plus, if you work in a bank in UK, you have to go through a very strict um, security check which checks your education from school, college, um, it checks your previous work references you know they you know you have to be in UK and you have to have a credit score to enable to get a job in the bank I mean I work in um, civil service and I had to go for a credit check they checked my full background they called people up from my past uh, called my teachers up they called my past workers um, employees up you know Hong Kongers can't do that because they don't have a credit history in UK. So a lot of them have to start from beginning. So if you come here and you have to start from beginning, beginning, you've got to clean the streets. You've got to do all of these low paid jobs that nobody else wants to do because no bank will hire you. You know, end of the day, London or UK doesn't have that many jobs. You know, a lot of jobs are going, you know, we're, we're, we're suff the businesses are suffering. They're hiring less and less people because the costs are rising. A lot of businesses have to pay for extra raw materials. They're going to have to pay for extra electricity costs, gas costs. You know, they can't afford to hire more people, especially if there's two people looking for work, one Hong Konger and one British person, they'll pick the British person. They know, you know, this British person has got a full background in UK and they'll rather pick him rather than picking a Hong Kong person who they're not sure about. Plus, banking in UK has got different regulations compared to banking in Hong Kong. So a lot of companies are not going to hire you for that. So you see, a lot of people don't seem to think. They think England is the land of gold, you know, land of opportunity. It's not. You know, people are actually le leaving UK. And people are moving from poverty, I mean, you know, into poverty from middle class. You know, people are finding it harder and harder to live in UK. And even if you're living in London, forget it. You will never be able to save any money in London because whatever you make in London, it goes in taxes, it goes in, you know, bills, rent. And also, if you come to UK, a lot of landlords, you know, they're not going to give you, give Hong Kongers flats because they don't have a credit history. A lot, a lot of landlords require credit history before you can rent flats from them and plus rents are so high I don't understand why Hong Kongers think they can come to UK 
and afford to live here without a high wage. They're not going to come to UK and get high wage straight away. No way. They're going to be stuck with these low paid jobs. And how are they going to afford to live? How are they going to afford to eat when, when prices are so sky high? You know, UK and London is on its way down. You know, it's, they're moving from a country um, that's on its way up into a country that's on its way down. You know, Hong Kong, China is on its way up at the moment. You know, it's the second largest economy. Its GDP is, you know, so much higher than UK at the moment. And UK is not growing at, at all. And But China is growing. And Hong Kong is growing. So why would you leave a growing country into a country that's on, on its way down? It's, it's like people in UK leaving UK and going to, say, um, Ukraine or something. You know, why would you do that? It just doesn't make any sense. You know, I just feel a lot of these Hong Kongers are brainwashed. Quite some of them are really stupid, I'm sorry to say. Really, really stupid for coming to UK. I mean, I live in UK. I can see exactly what's happening. And I think a lot of them are regretting it. And a lot of them will regret it. A lot of them will come to UK with high hopes saying, yeah, yeah, I've left Hong Kong. You know, I'm doing this for my future. I'm doing this for my kids' future. Then a few months later, when they're struggling to feed their kids, when they're struggling to pay the mortgage, when they're struggling to pay the rent, when they're struggling to pay the bills, that's when they'll start crying. They'll be like, oh, what have I left? I've left a beautiful, beautiful house in Hong Kong. And all my friends there, all my family's there, and I've come to this shitty country. What am I going to do now? I've got no money, no job. I can't feed my kids. Uh, what should I do? They're going to start crying like that. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think, and I'll see you in the next video.